Hi everybody, I'm Ron Kanner with Tikkun Global, a worldwide messianic family of congregations, ministries, and leaders dedicated to the dual restoration of Israel and the church. To get my free book, The Coming End Time Awakening, just go to tikkun.tv. I want to take a few minutes today and talk to you about faith, about trusting God, about believing God. You see, everything we do in life as believers is by faith. Hebrews says that he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can't really have a relationship with God without faith. You have to believe that he's there. You can't be born again without faith. You can't have a radical initial experience with Yeshua without believing that Yeshua died for you. But then you have the walk of faith. You have the life of faith where you have to trust God every single day. And I want to tell you something, friends. Living by faith is an awesome adventure. And if your life is, um, if it's limited, if you have boundaries, if you live your life saying, well, I can only go this far, far because that's as much that can happen. That's no fun. You want to live your life where you need God to break through, where you need the impossible. The Bible says what is impossible with man is possible with God. I want to live a life where I am believing God every single day for the impossible. That's a fun way to live. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about developing faith because you don't just wake up the day after you come to faith and speak to a mountain and tell him to go throw itself in the sea, and he does it. But Yeshua says that we can have that kind of faith where we, we speak and we believe. Now, I want to be clear. The speaking isn't the thing that does anything. The, the believing in and of itself doesn't do anything. It's trusting the real God that does something. He's really there. We're not just, you know, positive thinking, a good mental disposition. No, we are speaking to the creator of the universe. So how do we develop that kind of faith? Well, first of all, we got to get the word of God inside of us. The more of the word of God that is inside of you, the more you can draw from it in the day of trouble. Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do, and even greater works than these shall you, you do, because I go to my Father. Yeshua is sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for you. Do you, do you think about that? Jesus is praying for you to overcome, to succeed. And so he says that because of this, you're not just going to do the works that he does. You'll do even greater works than that. We are called to do the miraculous. And he says, whatever we ask, it's in the same chapter, John 14, first verse 12, then verse 14, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, that's a little bit confusing because people take verses like that and they misuse it. I've heard people say it's like a blank check. You can just write and, you know, the God in the name of Jesus, I want a Mercedes. I want a million dollar house. I want to win the lottery. Does it work like that? You see, Jesus is kind of assuming that when we use his name, that we're not going to misuse it for our own selfish desires. He's kind of assuming when he's teaching his disciples that are going to shake the world, that are going to go all over the world preaching the gospel, he's kind of assuming that when they take his powerful name, his precious name, his holy name, that they're going to be thinking, what is God's will? What does God want on earth? Not how do I fulfill my selfish desires? I need a plane or a this or that. He's assuming that we're going to be praying, God, help us reach the lost. God, help us get the gospels. Lord, use me to do miracles so that more people will know you. Lord, help me to help the poor. Help me to help the hurting. Now, in the midst of that, he will take care of every need that you have. But when we pray in the name of Yeshua, we're supposed to be praying according to God's will. What did Jesus say when he taught us how to pray? He said that we should pray, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not, Lord, fulfill my selfish desires. You know why? Because your selfish desires are not written in heaven. God's will is written in heaven, and that's what we pray for. Now, as we develop this faith, you got to understand that in the beginning, it's hard. 
You're not used to walking with God. You're not used to, you know, God telling you to give away money that you need. I remember I was in Bible college and I needed $500 to pay for my bill. And I had $300. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to take that $300 and give it to your friend there at school that needs the money. And I was like, but, but Lord, I need that money. In fact, I need $200 more than that to pay my bill. Or maybe they're going to kick me out of school. I don't know. But he said, no, I want you to have faith. I want you to trust me and I want you to be somebody that I can trust with money because I know you're going to do the right thing with it. So I took the $300 that I needed and I gave it to my friend Jimmy and he was able to pay his bill and I had zero. Do you know within one week from, I, I think it was five different sources. A, a check I had been waiting for from some work that I had done came in. Somebody gave me, I mean, literally from five different sources, when I added up, it was to the penny, $500. Exactly what I needed. You see, I was young back then, but now I've learned it's fun to give, to help, to bless, not because I'm going to have some selfish desire that if I give, I'm going to get rich is because if I give, not only am I blessing somebody, but I know God sees that. And he's going to say, I can trust you with funds. And then he's going to take care of me. I have never gone without food. God has always been faithful and we love to give. I remember when we went on the mission field the first time we went to Ukraine and uh, uh, <laughs> we, we had this huge container full of stuff, including a car that we shipped over to Ukraine. And I got a phone call just a couple days before I was supposed to go to Ukraine. And they told me, it was the people from the, the, the customs, and they said, we have selected your container to search. And because we're going to search your container, it's going to cost you I said, I'm like $500 or $1,000. I have to pay them to search my container and it's going to be delayed, I don't know, six weeks, two months. I was like, no, no, God, no. And I hung up the phone. I was like, this can't be happening. I trusted God. And they called me up a few days later and they said, uh, Mr. Canner, we don't know what happened. But And by the way, the chances of your container being searched was one in 1,000. And they said, Mr. Canner, we don't know what's happened, but your container is on its way to Ukraine. We don't know how, but somehow it got on the ship and, and we don't know what's going to happen. We might have to bring it back here and expect it, da, 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 da. but I knew it was the hand of God. Okay, again, how do we develop that kind of faith? Is Think about it this way. If I said to you, and you don't know me, you don't know if I'm good or if I'm bad, you just met me. And I said, I want you to meet me here at the same place tomorrow, I've got a hundred dollars for you. Are you going to come? Mm, you'll probably come if it's not that much out of your way. See if I'm going to show up. And you know what? I show up with a hundred dollars and you're like, whoa, that dude, Ron Canner's not so bad. And the next day I say, meet me. And I do it again and again and again. You're going to get to the point that when I tell you that I'm going to do something, you're not going to doubt, but you're going to believe. And I'm just a human being. It's the same with God. When we begin our walk with faith with, with God, it's a little bit difficult. Like, God, really, you want me to take 10% of all my earnings and just give it away? Really? Don't you know I need? Okay, I'm going to. And God said, see if I don't open up the windows of heaven and give you more than you have room for. And it's a little scary in the beginning, but you do it. And then God's faithful. You see, faith is all about relationship. It's not about formulas. It's not about if I give this much money, I'll give, I'll get this much back. No, it's about loving God, knowing God, enjoying God. I had the awesome privilege uh, 30 something years ago. I met David Paulson, great British teacher. He was at our Bible school lecturing for a week and we had to write a paper on faith. And I remember I met him and I said, David Paulson, what is faith? I got to write a paper on faith. Give me, give me something. And he looked at me and he said, faith is a relationship. It's pretty poor British accent. Faith is a relationship. And I was like, huh? I didn't understand. But I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I, I get it. It was like a light bulb came on. Faith is not a formula. It's not about reading some book. This is how you become you know, wealthy by doing X, Y, Z. This is how you get the blessing of God by following this form. No, it's about knowing God. 
It's about obeying God. It's about reading the Word of God, getting the Word of God so strong in you that when God says, bless that person with $100, bless that person with $1,000, you don't have to think twice about it because your relationship with God is so strong that even if you need that $1,000 tomorrow, you know that your God is going to come through for you. And friends, I've been living this life now for 36 years, and it's fun to live by faith, and it's no fun to live in fear. It's fun to know that God is going to provide. I remember a few years ago, uh, we were in a crisis. I had just gotten an email from uh, our administrator in the U.S., and she said to me, Ron, you are in the red, and, and we pledge a certain amount to our congregation here every month. Our ministry gives them several thousand dollars every single month because we love what God's doing here in Tel Aviv, and we were in the red, and I couldn't make that payment, and I don't know why, but I just said, Lord, speak to this person. I gave him a name. I don't know why, just came to me. I said, Lord, speak to him. Within three or four hours, that person emailed me and said, by the way, there's a check coming to you. I think it was for $16,000. It not only got us out of the red, it into the black, but I was able to make my monthly gift to the congr congregation. Friends, that's fun. You want to live by that. You want to live like that. You want to develop faith, but the way you do it is you get the Word of God inside. By the way, I keep pointing at my iPad because that's where I read the Bible. You get the Word of God inside of you. Greater things than what even Yeshua did, I will do. Whatever I pray in His name, according to His will, He's going to... You get the Word inside of you, and then you develop that relationship with God. Okay? All right. God bless you. Again, go to tikkun.tv. Tons of articles, tons of media, a free book for me when you sign up for a newsletter. God bless.